What's up, what's up, familia? Today is our masterclass number three. We are gonna be doing, by popular vote, empaths and fitness. So this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I'm an empath and I love fitness. <laughs> and I love fitness so much, it's been my 12 year career. Um, quick background on me, I am the founder of L3 Method, which is a beautiful high boutique, high touch women's 12 to 16 week program um, that helps its members lose weight, get into the best shape of their lives and then stay that way for the long term. So the, the concept of L3 is not ever needing another fitness program again, um, unless you want one, <laughs> but being able to master your own fitness and understand your body on the deepest level so that you are completely intuitive with your eating, with your movement, with all of your lifestyle habits, and you won't need another program or coach or company or protocol or supplement kind of telling you what to do ever, ever again. Um, so that's the concept behind L3, to create autonomy and independence. Um, so empathy, uh, let's, before we dive into this masterclass, I want to really quickly say that this is a safe container. If you comment here, I will hold your comment with both hands. I respect and honor every single part of someone's fitness journey. This is my love. This is my passion. Um, this is what I do and what wakes me up every single morning excited. It's to help people become the, the highest physical expression of themselves. And I know that can seem a little shallow or a little bit like, you know, to have the goal, like, I want to be hot. I want to lose weight. I want to be sexy. Like, yes, this can seem a little surface level, but we know that if we feel good about ourselves and we're confident in our bodies and we love the way we look, we will in turn be better you know, wives, husbands, boyfriend, girlfriends, um, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, employees, employers, and citizens of the world. So there is that fun kind of surface level to fitness. And then there is the deeper motivation behind it. So I hold all of that with both hands. I treasure and honor all of that. So your com comments are welcome here. Um, your DMs are welcome. If you have any questions or shares or things that have come up for you um, because of this masterclass. I am here, I welcome all of them. And um, yeah, I'm here to help, I'm here to serve. All right, empaths and fitness. Empath comes from the word empathy. And empathy means you have the ability to understand the experiences and feelings of another so much so that you can take that on as your own experience. Like you can viscerally feel what someone else is feeling or what the collective is feeling at times, depending on kind of like your level of empathy. Um, instead of, you know, sympathy, empaths kind of take things a step further. You know, like I said, we can actually feel the emotions and experience them as our own. Um, so for empaths, the world can be a little bit annoying, uh, sorry, not annoying, well, maybe, <laughs> but overwhelming. And fitness can be the same thing. Uh, food and body topics can be uh, overwhelming also for empaths. Um, you know, the world is a little bit different for us. I want to break down three main things today and I'm gonna try to keep this to 20 minutes because all of my master classes up until this point have been so long and I really wanna drive points home quickly. So if I breeze over things and you want me to elaborate, just DM me and we can continue the conversation. So first thing I want to do is break down today the pitfalls that empaths face perhaps more than others while they're pursuing their fitness goals number two i want to then then elaborate on the ways that empaths can actually harness their gifts because our superpower is feeling literally um, how we can harness this to get fit and then number three i want to chat about how fitness can actually help with the challenges that empaths navigate on a daily basis. Okay, so here are some examples of what empaths do to deal with how overwhelming life can be at times due to their heightened sensitivity. Um, these are the unhealthy pitfalls, if you will. Sometimes um, empaths will gain weight with food and um, living a sedentary lifestyle uh, to form unconsciously or consciously a protective barrier, if you will. So if you think about matter 
and it's the vibration of all matter, that energy level, um, the denser the matter is, the less sensitive it is, the slower the vibration. The lighter we get, the faster we can vibrate, the higher our energy level uptake can potentially be of this other type of energy. And I'm not talking calories, I'm talking chi, life force, prana energy. Um, and therefore, it's very understandable that some empaths will then deduce, well, if I become heavier, then I won't feel as much. This, yes, we won't feel as many good things, but we also won't feel the bad things. And the bad things can be heavy for empaths. So I have compassion for this. I understand. Um, but this is something that, that we do. And it's okay. It's not good or bad. It's just um, something to address. Um, of course, this can become unhealthy when the weight, you know, carries into other things like an increase in risk for disease, injury, burnout, fatigue, um, shortened lifespan, all of that. Um, yeah, so sometimes um, added weight can feel like protection. It can feel safer to certain people. Um, yeah, also it depends on how the weight is being gained. Like what are we intaking? So if we're intaking tons of animal products, there's a very dense, heavy energy to that. Um, you know, if our, not to sound gruesome, but if our stomach is like a graveyard, that, that's a very dense uh, energy and a slower vibration. Um, tons of fried food, processed food, chemicals, salt, excessive, excessive salt. These are all things that can put that type of weight on that starts to feel really, really heavy, unhealthy, but dense so that we're desensitized. Um, we can gain weight in other ways. Maybe our eating habits aren't terrible, but we have a slower metabolism. And therefore, if we never exercise, we're prone to gaining weight. Like, so in, in the sense of like, we numb out, we desensitize as empaths by watching TV or stuffing our feelings with food or, um, you know, other just distractions, like being on the internet for long periods of time. There are so many ways that we can numb out in today's society to avoid feeling. But remember, if we want to feel good, and fitness is all about feeling good, because if you feel good working out, let's say, for instance, you'll keep doing it. That's what causes sustainability to occur. And sustainability is the long lasting weight loss and maintaining the dream body that we want. And that's the only type of result I'm I'm concerned with. I'm not really interested in the temporary results. If you are, it's your body, that's your choice. But I, um, my, most of my work is devoted to creating long-term sustainable lasting fit bodies. So, um, so where was I? Yes, so if we feel good, um, if we feel good, then we will keep being fit but we cannot know how to feel good as empaths until we know how to feel. And sometimes we have been down this path for so long because being empathic hurts, you know, it's just such intense feelings all the time that we've gone down a path of desensitization just to survive, just to feel like we can make it through the world like everyone else who seems to be fine and tough and, you know, you know more, less sensitive. Um, so relearning how to feel can be really scary for an empath, but we can't feel good until we relearn how to feel. Now, it's our superpower. So learning how to feel and be sensitive as an empath and have boundaries is like your winning ticket and it takes time, but learning how to feel, so physical sensation and emotion coming from the body is how we are going to have intuition. Um, we have, I'm sorry, we have intuition, but how are we going to be able to tune into the intuition? So we have to communicate with our bodies and we can't communicate. We can't have the intuition, which leads to things like intuitive eating, intuitive movement, which are, which is true independence instead of following calorie counting plans or macro plans or specific workout plans, being able to move and operate and make choices from your center. That's what causes that autonomy and that long lasting success in fitness. But it's, it's hard to unpack that for certain empaths who are like, I want that, but I also don't want to feel all the things that I was feeling before I, you know, started to numb out my feelings because it's, it's really tough. So I have compassion and 
It's not about making a whole bunch of changes all at once. It's about making small incremental changes. And I'm like already way past time. <laughs> there I go. Um, but making these tiny little changes um, towards that positive, um, that positive outcome. Okay. Um, and then it's not as scary. Uh, yeah. So once an empath takes their tools and applies them inward for their own benefit, you can utilize your heightened sensitivity to discern. So often uh, empaths will feel all the feelings of those around them and the collective as a whole, but it's hard for them to tune into their own feelings. Sometimes, sometimes not the case. So like, man, I know exactly how that person across the room is feeling, but I don't know how I feel. And so this is part of the process of learning to do things from your own intuition. It's that initial connection, forming a relationship, communicating with your own self, and then operating from that space. Again, it's like, try a little bit, fall, get back up, have compassion for yourself, keep going. Um, I'm gonna skip that point. Uh, also empaths just care very deeply. This could be a potential pitfall um, in fitness because it's like, they really want those around them to feel good because then an empath feels good. If everyone around them feels good, sometimes it's the case. So let's say you wanna go out to eat with a group of people and, and you wanna go to a healthy restaurant and everyone else wants to go to an unhealthy restaurant. You'll go to the unhealthy restaurant because everybody else wants to and you think, okay, they'll, this will make them happy. So that's where we will have a pitfall. Um, it's almost like a people pleasing effect, but it's from, it's not an inauthentic place, you know, where empaths will people please. It's from a, I want you to feel good because I know how you feel and I care about you. Um, same thing with like a workout, you know, if your workout buddy flakes or is like, let's just go get frozen yogurt instead of working out today. Empath empaths will sometimes have that pitfall where they'll cave and be like, okay, because it's what they want to do. So, okay, here's our second category. I'm trying to be like concise here. <laughs> um, can you tell I'm passionate about this stuff? Ways that empaths can harness their gifts to get fit. Intuitive eating. Okay, here we go. Here's like the simplest way that we can start to formulate um, an intuitive eating pattern for ourselves as empaths. Go grab a piece of food. Let's just call it an apple. Hold an apple in your hand. <sighs> Breathe. Take a few deep breaths with this apple in front of you. You're holding it. You can either close your eyes or have like a softened gaze. So empaths don't just operate from sight. They have this other sense where they can kind of feel into the space around them. You empaths, you got superpowers, I'm telling you. So feel yourself kind of expand and go around the apple in front, behind, as well as around your own body. Now you're in a more neutral space. It's not so much me and Apple. It's kind of like this general space. Now from here, you can figure out if your body is saying yes or no. Is this Apple the right thing for me to eat right now? Or is my body saying, no, this is not the best option for us at this time? And if at first you try this exercise, and it doesn't work and you're like, I don't feel it, just keep trying. If you believe you're an empath and you have proof from your you know, history of living life to back this up, you will be able to do this. You can develop intuitive eating a lot easier than what some fitness professionals and some registered dietitians and nutritionists will tell you. They'll tell you it's complicated, they'll give you 8,000 rules. Maybe those apply for some people, but I'm talking to you empath today. And as an empath, you have so much governing sovereignty over your own body when you tap into it. So it's as simple as that. If I tap in, I can walk into a grocery store and I can put my, my body, my physical body in front of some food, whether it's like a bag of rice or some croutons or whatever, some vegan cheese or some celery, what have you. And I can practice this and I can feel into whether my body wants it today or this week even, or if it's like a hard no, sometimes it'll feel like maybe in the future, but maybe not right now, or it'll feel like a yes, 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 I really need this. And there may be a nutrient in that food that your body actually really needs because it's low on. 
vitamin C or vitamin D or what have you. Okay, here's another way you can um, empath, you can uh, harness your gifts to get fit. Because you're an empath and you can feel people, you can tap into that sense and feel if someone, whether it's a company, an individual trainer, coach, nutritionist, a supplement, or any other type of service, like an app or something, and you can feel into the people operating behind those things, or if it's th that individual trainer or coach, you could feel into that individual. And you really, if you really take the time to do this, you more readily than others can feel if that person or that company has your best interests at heart. And they designed this product or this service to truly help me because they, they really care about my health. They really care about helping people get healthy. Or are they profit first? And that's okay if they are. There's nothing, there's no, it's not good or bad either. But you, you have to prioritize your own health and your own goals. You're not prioritizing the profits of that company. So you have discernment so much discernment at your disposal. You will be able to tell if this person is in alignment with you and will help you get to your goals and sustain them. And if they're not, just say no, no matter how pushy they are, whatever type of forceful energy they're giving off, have your boundaries, utilize your boundaries. Be polite, say no, thank you, I'm good. Cool. Um, Having your workout time be self-pleasure time. This is another way. Make your body and spirit feel good and you'll keep doing it. Then consistency is created. Feeling good during your workouts is so important for empaths. We kind of went over that in the beginning. This, this is what creates the long-term sustainability and the maintenance of your dream body. <clears throat> okay, number four, music. So empaths, you may or may not realize it, but you can take on the energy um, and the, the emotions of the singer or the, the artist, like the musical artist, the instrumentalist, the one playing the instrument, the one DJing or the one singing. So while you're working out, be very mindful of the music you choose because movement, like kinesthetic movement plus emotion will create your future more so than most. As an empath, you can, solidify, you can cement in your future, meaning like what you want your body to look like, feel like, perform like, with the combination of your moving during your exercise regimen, your workout, and the music that you're listening to, because it generates emotions. And you, you will embody the emotion of the artist or artists um, on some scale, depending on, you know, it's an individual thing. But just be mindful that you're and whatever that is for you, be mindful that you're embodying the right energy, the energy that's right for you and your goals and what you want your future to look like. Number five, you can feel as an empath if a, oh, I already talked about this. Um, yeah, so to access your gift fully for your own benefit, for the increase of your quality of life and your quality of health and physique, um, it requires self-trust and the belief that you, the way you feel matters and that how you feel holds nuggets of truth. This is true, borrow my belief in you and your own intuition until you have it for yourself. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to have a high quality of life. You get to have boundaries when they're necessary. Okay, four minutes-ish. How fitness can help with the challenges and paths navigate on a daily basis. So this is the third and last category of this masterclass. The lighter you get, the more sensitive you will get. Uh, the denser your physical body is, the lower your vibration. So we kind of talked about this already. Um, you're able to discern well when you can readily grasp more info through phys physical sensation, which is one way that empaths intake information from their external environment as well as their internal environment. So how you feel versus how others feel. And so it's physical sensation, it's emotion, and then these things lead to thoughts. So these are the different ways that um, information is transmitted into, out of, and through empaths, okay? Um, so food, 
food is close. So the food that's closer to the sun, we're in a little woo woo here, but the stuff checks out. Food that's closer to the sun is going to have higher life force, higher prana. So like a, an orange or a coconut that's falling from, the, from a tree and offering itself to you is going to have a higher vibration. So the higher vibration of the food that you eat, that's going to turn into cells in your body that you carry around for seven years. So you are what you eat. And as an empath, we have to be mindful of, of these things because we just, we feel more. So we'll feel more of the vibration of our own bodies than others. Some empaths can actually feel emotion in food and water. So some empaths, if you go on the blogs, you can see people who have actually said, like, I feel the energy of the pipes, the old pipes that water is like rushing through that I'm drinking. Some other empaths will say uh, they feel the emotion of, you know, the animals that they, the dead animals they consumed or the, the whatever, the adrenaline from the, the animal that was killed for their food. Um, number four, here is another way that fitness can help with the challenges and pass navigate on a daily basis. Physical movement is, oh my God, it's so good for us. It gives strength to the system. It gives a path by which we can get energy to move through. So sometimes empaths will feel something. I got two minutes. Sometimes empaths will feel something. And then that energy that they took on from their external environment will get stuck in their body. And we don't know how to move through it. Exercise is like a no brainer way to get through that. It's really, really cool. So I don't know, as an empath, you can let me know in the comments or, or DM me. Have you ever felt have you ever felt stuck or just had energy that wasn't feeling good or heavy in the body? And then after a workout, you feel better. It's not just endorphins. You're releasing and moving stuff through just like you, just like blood flows through the system better when you exercise. So do other things like emotions and emotions can get stuck. Um, they can change our physical structure, you know, like slump, slump shoulders, spine, not looking right. You know, all of that. Um, also, the strength component. So a strong, a supple body, like an able-bodied empath is much better. I, I would put their money, I would put my money on an empath who's strong and fit at handling life's issues as, as they're thrown at them over another empath who is um, really um, atrophied and weak. And neither one is right or wrong. It's your body. Again, you get to choose whatever you want to look and feel like. But if you if you want to be able to like tend to life's crises and challenges and just, you know, unfortunate things that happen like deaths in the family, um, you know, relationship issues, career changes, moving, you know, babies, financial struggle struggles. I, I I'm talking about, I mean, there's a lot of amazing things in life. These are some of the harder things. Sometimes they're good and bad, right? They have lessons. They're beautiful. And they're also tragic but we can handle them better if our physical body is strong. If we are light and fit and mobile and flexible, not only will we feel more confident about ourselves and just feel more comfortable in our skin, like our outer reflection, our outer expression is a reflection of who we are on the inside, which is beautiful, light, strong, fierce, badass, intelligent. Um, yeah, I, I put my money on that fit empath any day of the week. My apologies, I had a phone call. Okay, um, yeah, some empaths are even like, they've said they're under psychic attack. You're better able to handle that as a fit person, physically fit. Um, cloudy days, storms, soul crushing work, all of this gets easier if we are taking care of our physical vessel. Okay, here's another one, lots of rats, rest. <laughs> empaths, Sometimes feel don't deserve it, not deserving of rest, but may need it more than others. Consider this an essential part of your fitness regimen. Get the rest you need, count rest and workout time as part of your alone time and get firm with your boundaries around these things. If you're a parent, the quality of your rest is really important because you might not be getting the amount, the quantity that you need. So make sure your pre-bedtime rituals are conducive to slowing the brain down and getting into a really restful state so that you're rest is high quality. Um, this is great for your psyche and your body and you'll hear, feel, see um, 
that this time is just for you and it's for your recharging. Sorry, I'm getting phone calls. A uh, couple more minutes here. Firm boundaries with all people, set expectations, and those that love you and are not trying to exercise codependency on you will be stoked that you are taking care of yourself. Um, so here's some quick ways that you can have high quality rest. Turn off the, the TV, close the blinds, all the lights, like the fire alarm, like the, don't unplug your fire alarm, but like try to cover the little tiny lights that your skin and your brain will still be sensing and will kind of keep you on alert a little bit. Um, tons of alcohol before bed is not really a good thing for getting high quality rest. Being on your phone, like screen time, put your blue blockers on and then you're good to go. Draw a bath if needed. Do everything in your power to get your brain to wind down. Um, here's another thing, nature. Nature is so helpful. It's another kind of no brainer, just like exercise. I cannot stress how important nature is for empaths. It's it's cleansing to our everything, to our soul, spirit, mind, body, everything. Um, it can really clear out the bad energy and the, the emotions that are heavy and bring an empath back to a centered space. So sit by a stream, put your bare feet on a rock, go walk by the ocean, forest, even like a park will do the trick. Just put your feet in the ground, ground, earth, it's called earthing. Um, go outside and talk to the moon at night. It works. It works for us empaths. Share um, with the moon, you know, or what have you, nature, your challenges of the day. Give those to her, how you feel. Let mama earth take some of this. Um, tell them what your body and your health goals are. Let her soak these in and make magical things happen with you. The goal here is not to let your empathic gifts derail you, or derail your efforts, but rather to let your increasing fitness and health amplify the gifts you've been granted in this life. So that is all today, all for today. I hope that, you know, just cherry pick. Maybe there are a couple things in here that were helpful. And I tried to kind of go across the span of all empaths and the different, um, you know, textures and qualities that we all have. Um, so hopefully you found something in here helpful today. I love you. I'm rooting for you. You deserve to have a high quality of life. You deserve to have the exact body that you want and the yummy self-care habits to sustain that. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Mwah! And I will see you soon. Bye.